Hello, everybody, and welcome to the pharma webinar Vitepsol, the synonym for hard fat in suppositories and ovules production. I will shortly introduce myself. My name is Michael Plum, and I am working in the product development and technical market support for more than 30 years. Today, I would like to give you a detailed information on production, usage, properties, commonalities, and differences of our Vitepsol hard fats. So if you're ready, then I would like to start. Currently, we have 17 different hard fat bases, including those hard fats containing additives, such as beeswax or anionic emulsifiers. But today I would like to focus only on the hard fats without additives. What are the differences? The main differences are the most important parameter, melting range. And the range is from 31 degrees up to 44 degrees. The second important parameter is the hydroxyl value or hydroxyl number. And this ranges from three up to 70 maximum. And third is the consistency of our hard fats. And this ranges from soft melting to brittle and solid. Mainly we have four different categories of hard fats, starting with the H type. H stands for hard, so this means a brittle fat exhibiting low hydroxyl values of maximum 15. Lower hydroxyl values are of importance if you are processing APIs, which are a bit sensitive against higher hydroxyl values, for instance, the acetylic salicylic acid. Then we have the W type. W stands for the German word weich, which means soft. So we have a soft and more elastic mass exhibiting higher hydroxyl values of maximum 50. Due to the fact that the W range contains a certain amount of diglycerides, these W types are exhibiting slightly higher viscosities. And this is important if you are processing dispersed or insoluble APIs like Econazole, for instance, because if the viscosity is too low, then you have the permanent danger of so-called API sedimentation, where the API sedimentates to the tip of the finished suppository. And this should be avoided because in this case, the API or the API system is not uniformly distributed in the suppository. Then we have the S-type. The S-type is, let's say, a ready-to-use base because it contains, besides the hard fat, some additives. All of them contain the CTRA25, which is an adoxylated fatty alcohol of C16 and C18. Sometimes beeswax is added or some other ingredients. These S-types are important in order to process aqueous or aqueous ethanolic herbal extracts, for instance. So you can just use this type, these S-types as it is. There is no need to add another or additional emulsifier because you can incorporate up to 10% of water and you are still able to perform or to produce uh, a genuine suppository. Last but not least, we have the E-type. E-type fats are hard fats with higher melting points. And these types are only used for melting point adjustment. This is important if you are processing APIs like ketoprofen, which are completely soluble in a fat. And if this is the case, there will be a decrease of the melting point. And in order to shift the melting point up into the proper region, you have to add certain amounts of higher melting fat. The specific amount which have to be added depends on the API and on the concentration of the API, of course. Our hard fats, our Vitepsol hard fats, are delivered in a pestle shape. And in the following slides, I would like to give you an information on this pestilation process. This takes place in a specific covered clean room class D environment. As you can see, this is a complete covered machine. 
and in the inside you have an 11 meters in length cooled st stainless steel plate. If we look inside, at the beginning there is the molten hard fat which is dropped via a specific uh, dosage unit onto this cooled steel plate. So you have little drops on this plate. And over the distance of 11 meters and um, the fact that it is cooled from down under and from top with chilled and cooled air, at the end all the drops or pestles have been congealed and solidified. And there is a big knife at the end where these pestles are scratched off the band. The level, one level down, there is the filling area, which is a laminar flow system and a balance system where the cardboards are filled with the pestles. The normal packaging weight is 20 kg and within this cardboard there is a PE inliner. And then several subsequent steps follow. The next step after the filling into the inliner is the welding of the PE inliner. And then the cardboard is completely sealed with a specific tape and this is in order to avoid small insects coming into the packaging material. This should be avoided. And the last step is a metal detector which detects possible small metal pieces. Let's say some words about the stability of our hard fats. Our hard fats are completely saturated fats. So there is no real hydrolysis danger. In order to prove this, we are performing a so-called Ranzimat test. This is the Ranzimat equipment, as you can see. And this is a forced oxidation process, applying high temperature and a constant airflow through the molten and heated substance. So on the one hand you have a reaction tube which is placed in a heating block and there is a small glass tube where constantly air oxygen is bubbled through the molten and heated sample. And on the other side you have the measuring vessel containing the conductivity measuring cell, the measuring principle of this apparatus and it contains deionized water and as soon as the decomposition process started or hydrolysis there are set free certain substances like free fatty acids or other products and these released substances increase the conductivity and this is what is measured by this equipment and you can produce certain Ranzimat curves and in this curve I have, I will show you a comparison of cocoa butter which is still used for production of suppositories and ovules and this is compared to Vitopsol W35 and H15 curves and as you can easily see the cocoa butter decompose quite quickly after a certain times so there's a very rough upcoming or uprising of the curve and if you look at the Vitepsor curve they are significantly more stable and more flat compared to the cocoa butter. I would also tell you something about the polarity of hard fats. Normally a fat is not miscible with water because fats are normally quite hydrophobic but as you can see on the next slide there I have added a dye stuff to several Vitepsol types and as you can see there's an uprise or a shift or intensifying of the blue dye stuff of the blue color and this is directly correlated to an increase of the hydroxy value. So the higher the hydroxy value is the more polaric is the hard fat. There are a constant or well, there is a constant danger in combination with hard fats and this is called, called polymorphism. What is polymorphism? A hard fat is a more or less complex mixture of fat crystals and these fat crystals occur in 
certain states. Starting with the so-called alpha state, which is from a thermodynamically point of view, the most unstable state. The appearance of these particles are somewhat translucent and there is a randomly ordered grid calling or called hexagonal structure of the fat crystals. And over the time, there are certain state transitions. But if you produce a suppository with a fat occurring in the alpha state, which is the normal state uh, after production of our Witepsol pastels and after delivery to the customers, if you produce uh, suppositories from these fat with the alpha state, you will obtain suppositories with a glossy and shiny surface. Now there occur some state transitions. The first transition is from alpha state to the so-called beta prime state. This is thermodynamically still unstable and the appearance of these particles is or are white. And as you can see now we have a partially ordered grid with the so-called autorhombic structure of fat crystals. And over a certain time period, there's a third transition from beta prime to the beta state. And this is the thermodynamically speaking most stable state. The appearance of these particles is white to opaque. And as you can now see, we have a highly ordered grid with the so-called triclinic structure of the fat crystals. But besides the uh, optical appearance, as you can see, if you produce suppositories from alpha state fat, you have a shiny glossy look. And if over the time the suppositories change their surface, their appearance, and now a dull and opaque or matte surface occur. This is not only an, ap an optical problem or cosmetic problem. You have additional problems as I would like to explain in the following slide. In this experiment, I have produced several suppositories. One of them I have stored at four degrees in the fridge and the others I have stored at 29 degrees. And as you can see, there is an uprise of the melting point from 34.6 degrees up to this. So there is an increase of 1.5 degrees of centigrade. The consequence of this melting point increase is that customers um, obtain or get poor API release rate, rates, which is definitely a no-go and should be avoided. In the next slide, I would like to demonstrate a bit more, let's say, scientifically, what's the problem or what's the effect of the polymorphism is by performing a DSC. A DSC means differential scanning calorimetry. And within this method, there are measured energy states during heating and cooling cycles. And then it is calculated the ratio of liquid and solid fat particles. Normally you are performing two heating cycles, the first heating and the second heating. Each cycle consists of a cooling down of uh, to minus 20 degrees and a heating up to 80 degrees. And if you look on the right hand side at the temperature of 36 degrees, you can see with the better state, which is the most stable one and which um, is the polymorphism as itself, you have a percentage of liquid hard fat of nearly 63%. If you now perform the second heating, the fat will turn or will be transferred into the fresh state, into the alpha state. Again, cooled down to minus 20 degrees and again, warmed up to 80 degrees. And if you now look at the temperature of 36 degrees, you can see on the right hand side, now we have nearly 99% of liquid hard fat. So there's a clear difference. The hard fat showing the polymorphism has very high amount of uh, solid hard fats which increase the melting point. And you can see, if you look at 36 degrees, there's a clear difference. 
there are mainly three manufacturers of um, suppository producing machines. The market leader is Sarong, but there are two smaller companies with uh, producing small-scale suppository production machines. But today I would emphasize or would, would provide some information on the market leader on the Sarong machine. Let's have a look inside. It all starts with a plastic foil forming unit and then the filling station follows. As you can see here, you have a vessel which is heated and contains the molten hard fat API mixture or some additional excipients which may be added and it's constantly pumped in a circle in order to have a uniform distribution of the ingredients. And then using a dosage pump, this mixture is pumped into or filled into the molds which have previously been performed. After that, the molds are sealed or welded and then entering the cooling unit. The cooling unit consists of at least one, mostly two cooling chambers where you can adjust the temperature, lower temperatures in order to perform a proper congealing process of the, of the hard fat filled in these foils. At the end you have the link up unit with um, the foil cutting and the final packaging step. Okay. Which options we do have to avoid such suppository problems as previously described? The most important thing is prior to starting of suppository production, you have to heat up the pure hard fat to approximately 55 or 60 degrees for a minimum 10 minutes. And this is necessary in order to destroy so called memory effects of the stable beta modification fat crystal grid. You may remember if you have the beta state which demonstrates the polymorphism you have a stable and highly ordered grid and this has to be completely destroyed um, by applying higher temperatures in order to obtain the randomly ordered grid uh, of the fat crystals which demonstrates the alpha state. And then Quite important is the storage of the finished suppositories, which should preferably far below 25 degrees. On every suppository packaging, there is indicated store below 25 degrees. But it should be recommended to store the suppositories in a fridge at around 4 degrees, because this prolongs um, the occurrence of the polymorphism. But as you can imagine or may imagine, it is not very convenient to apply a suppository with four degrees of Celsius. But it's up to you to decide. But in respect of stability, it should be stored in a fridge. But has, there are some other problems which, uh, which could occur with finished suppositories. And all these problems are related to an improper temperature handling. And this could lead to longitudinal cracks or to horizontal cracks. And very often you can see dimples or holes. And this is a no-go because this also um, mean that the API is not uniformly distributed in the suppository. And then we have the already described problem of API sedimentation. Sometimes you have a migration from, of the active from the inner part of the suppository to the outer surface appearing in those white spots. This is no uh, polymorphism effect, this is a crystallization of the active on the surface. And quite often you can observe this core forming. And all these problems which I uh, told you is improper, improper means after filling, most of the companies apply very low temperatures in order to have a quick and fast solidification process. But this causes the previously mentioned problems, so it's not always good to apply very low temperatures. 
sometimes this is API related, there is a color change, but this um, cannot be influenced directly. You should add, maybe should add a stabilizing agent in order to keep the color as it is. The most important topic on how to avoid dimension problems is the difference between pouring temperature and temperature of the first cooling zone or first cooling chamber of a suppository machine should not exceed 15 degrees. Whenever I have been contacted by customers who are facing similar problems, I ask them what is the temperature difference and in most cases it was far beyond 20 degrees, 22, 23, up to 25 degrees, which is way too much and lead to definitely broken and cracked suppositories, up to 77% in the worst case. But working within this difference will definitely reduce such problems tremendously and significantly. And all of the suppository manufacturers perform so-called dissolution tests, which are described in the European pharma Pharmacopoeia. And the most common one is the paddle test. There we have a water bath of 37 degrees. You have up to eight glass vessels containing a specific medium and you have a stirrer. And the general requirement is at least 75% of API release within or after 60 minutes. So starting this process, you insert in each vessel a suppository, start the stirrer, and every 50 minutes you take a sample and measure the released API via a spectral photometer. But doing this, you sometimes are facing specific problems. And as we can see here, this is all from the same test. Three of the eight vessels show completely different melting behaviors. You have here distributed fat spots. You have a pond around the stirrer. Here are no fat spots, only a pond around the stirrer. And as you can imagine, the surface is quite undefined. And this is the reason why, of course, the active releases are completely different. So it's, um, but this, you cannot predict this, it happens or not. And uh, this is the reason why this pedal test started in the past with four vessels, and now we have six vessels, and today there are eight vessels. This is in order to minimize the statistical results. But sometimes um, these, the problems are directly related to the used API. In this case, we have mesalazine. As you can see, you have bubbles sticking at the stirrer, a bubble sticking at the bottom, and still a pond around the stirrer. And again, these are undefined surfaces leading to not clearly or differences in API releases. But there is another sophisticated dissolution test also described in the European Pharmacopoeia. It's called the chamber test. If you have a closer look on that, you can see there is a little chamber where you insert the suppository. Then you insert this chamber into the machine and this whole system is flooded with the medium of 37 degrees. And over the time, the suppository will melt and the molten fat is gathering on top of this. The blue highlighted area is the, the molten hard fat. And as you can see, there's a clearly defined contact surface to the medium, which leads to constant API releases. In this case, uh, it is a continuous measurement. So it's pumped in a circle and you can constantly measure the released API. And again, at least 75% of API release after 60 minutes. We are often asked by customers, could you recommend me for a specific API, a specific Vitapsol grade? Many customers won't disclose the API they are using. They just say, we have an API which we do not want to disclose. Can you recommend me a hard fit base? In this case, you can always recommend as a general recommendation, Vitapsol H15, which is our, let's say, all purpose base. 
and if the customer starts the experiments and they may facing some problems they will come back to you and give you more detailed information maybe they now disclose the api and then you can go into further details and in order to give a good recommendation we have clustered apis to certain groups in combination to specific Bitepsol hard fit recommendations by the way this table is part of the um, Bitepsol brochure containing um, lots of information and this is available via our website here you have an overview of different repository and ovule finished products you can see there's not only um, plastic foils as a packaging but also laminated aluminum foils as you can see here there's a whole bunch of different APIs used, used in combination with our Witepsol types you have antifungal suppositories hemorrhoidal suppositories energetic suppositories and so on but sometimes customers ask us is it possible to use the, our, your hard fats as a component to pro, for production of dermal or transdermal creams, lotions or ointments? And of course, yes, this is possible because the hard fat gives a certain structure to the emulsions. Even a direct oral uptake is possible, which we are constantly asked. Is it possible to process it for direct uh, oral uptake and yes it is for instance to produce chewing tablets chewing tablets consists of at least 20 percent of hard fat and as our hard fat and i'm talking again talking about hard fats without additives these are grass substances grass means generally recognized as safe so they are absolutely harmless substances with uh, neutral odor and taste so you can use it or you can use it indirectly for manufacturing of capsule filling masses. This is also possible, of course. So the conclusion now is, based on the previously provided information, IOI Olio GmbH is quite proud to say that within the past 50 years, our Vitepsor glycerides have developed to a synonym for hard fat used in the production of suppositories and ovules, saying if anybody is talking about hard fat they mean mostly bit of soul and this is a quite comfortable situation for us as ioi and as the manufacturer of these bit of soul hard fats whatever question you have directed from the customer concerning prices technical problems deliveries or whatever the whole ioi pharma team is really glad to assist you so please contact us so this is the end of the today's webinar and if you have any questions right now please feel free to ask